early care of femur fractures, the case for intramedullary nailing, and that is as opposed to uh, external fixation and uh, early damage control methods, and this talk really was part of a uh, point counterpoint um, uh, at the uh, Pennsylvania Orthopedic Society meeting recently, have some acknowledgement and uh, disclosures. So with early care, whether you, uh, this is really important, uh, whether you choose external fixation or IM nailing, the goal is early stabilization. Okay, that's really what you're trying to provide for these patients with these femur fractures. And, and if an X-fix is chosen for damage control techniques, then it eventually is staged to an intramedullary nail, and that's the goal. And uh, in my opinion, I believe traction is okay uh, for a day or two, but it can be problematic beyond that. Um, certainly, it's difficult to move patients, even if they're not going to be up and mobile, just to, to go to studies, to um, you know, go back and forth from the OR for other reasons. Every time you got to connect the traction, put it back on. It's it's they're not exactly they don't really have a portable traction, which is what an X fix could be. So. There are problems with staged management with an X-fix. It's, it's not a free lunch. There's two surgeries, at least, right? So there's increased cost. There's increased morbidity to the patient. You can potentially get pin tract infections. I mean, you want to put an intramedullary nail in this device, but you have this patient with these draining pins. It's the femur, so a lot of soft tissue around it. They drain a lot. Uh, you got these patients third spacing, potentially, in the surgical ICU. Uh, and it, sometimes the patient never gets staged. It can happen. Patient gets uh, systemic inflammatory response syndrome, ARDS, fevers, pneumonia, whatever, and they're just never really ready to go back uh, and get uh, their IM rod done, uh, their septic, whatever. Uh, and so it can happen. You, you sort of lose that window when you do a staging treatment. The other thing is it does lead to some complacency. Um, what I mean by that is um, a lot of times the right thing to do for the patient is an IM nail. But some surgeons will just exfix it because it's easier to do, perhaps. Uh, and I think you know anybody can fall into this trap of uh, being complacent about it. Um, sometimes, for some patients, the right thing to do is just rod them and be done with it. Okay. So early total care versus damage control, uh, which is better? Unfortunately, we simply don't have enough uh, good data. So here's a paper from 2012, Timing of Definitive Treatment of Femoral Shaft Fractures in Patients with Multiple Injuries, Systematic Review. Okay, so this is a nice study. It looked at what's out there, um, and it looked at three different types of studies, early total care versus damage control, femur fractures with head injury, and femur fractures with chest injury. Those are the two main ones that we're worried about in these polytrauma patients. And there was, unfortunately, no significant difference in ARDS and mortality, although the length of stay... Um, is shorter with the early total care treatment, as you perhaps would expect if they get rotted right away, they don't need a second surgery, so um, that could potentially speed up their care. This is a nice uh, review paper in the Orthopedic Clinics of North America, The Evolution of Damage Control Orthopedics. Um, and in this, they talk about three scenarios for damage control approach in the borderline patient. One is poor response to resuscitation. Um, and uh, I think what you're looking for is you've got to get that lactate down to at least uh, 2.5. Uh, the other uh, scenario is the patient with a closed head injury. Unfortunately, we just don't have good, firm guidelines for this. And essentially, uh, what you have to do is just talk to neurosurgery, make sure there's uh, clear communication about if the patient's safe or not and what our orthopedic intentions are, uh, and then determine what the best timing is. And the third thing are respiratory issues. You want to ask, can this patient be extubated? Okay. So here's a uh, clinical guideline that we developed that we use for initial management and timing of definitive management of femur fractures and multiple trauma patients. And this is kind of a summary slide, a summary table uh, from, the, uh, from our uh, evidence-based document. And it's very lengthy and I uh, won't go through it in detail here. Uh, each uh, scenario, the borderline patient, femur with chest injury, and then femur with head injury, uh, has some recommendations for what do we do for provisional, uh, and what do we when and what is the timing for definitive uh, stabilization. So one of the first things you got to do is identify who's at risk. 
okay, so, so firstly you have this so-called borderline patient, right? And there's some, this is from our, uh, our uh, protocol here, and on the left, sort of, these are some definitions from the, uh, from um, one of Christoph Pape's paper on what is the borderline patient. A uh, patient who's going to be undergoing multiple IM nails, high presenting lactate, etc. Okay, other at-risk patients are patients with femur fractures and chest injuries, and the other ones are the ones with femur and head injuries. Okay, uh, so this is just some uh, key points I already pointed out. What about provisional stabilization? Um, well, certainly at our institution, we, we, we do immediate skeletal traction with a tensioned Kirshner wire. Uh, there's other ways to do this. Some places don't even do traction or just do skin traction. Well, whatever. Um, this is how we do it, um, and certainly many other centers. Uh, the exception is the borderline or chest injured patient who goes right from the emergency department to the OR. Okay, so if a patient goes right to the OR and has some procedure and is stable to go and undergo an X fix, um, well, certainly that's a patient you don't have to put in traction. You can put in an X fix. So if they're if they're a um, you know if, if they're a at risk patient uh, and they're in the OR, then uh, what we try to do is that's when we will try to get them in an X fix. And if they don't go to the OR, well, then they'll stay in traction for the time being. Uh, here's a paper, skeletal traction versus X fix uh, for initial uh, temporization. And uh, it's a retrospective study. And uh, keep in mind here uh, that, um, you know, skeletal traction was done in quite a few patients, okay, 60 patients, um, no differences in ARDS um, uh, or all these other uh, outcome measures that they looked at. So one center, one study, but uh, I think the, the point here is that uh, skeletal traction is an option. I don't think you're, you're not going to kill patients by putting them in skeletal traction. It's a very good temporizing treatment in my opinion. So these are those uh, three uh, groups, borderline patients, chest injured patients, head injured. So when you're doing definitive fixation, uh, the borderline patient typically you want an X fix and then convert to an IM nail at one week. The chest injured patients often, if you can get their lactate down, they can go to the OR within 24 hours, as you can with the head injured patients. Uh, but you just have to make sure you are on the same page with neurosurgery. So here's a case: 24 year old male, gunshot wound times three. Uh, and I'll just I'm not going to go through all this, but uh, you can say the patient uh, uh, bled a lot was hypotensive, uh, lost blood to the point they just started getting compartment syndrome in their forearm. Uh, to make a long story short, it's got a femur fracture, but is very sick. So this patient's in the OR, they get an X-fix, okay? Uh, and uh, that patient gets an X-fix when they went back to the OR uh, because it was not felt the patient was going to be stable to undergo um, uh, definitive fixation. But the problem is the patient gets septic, gets positive blood cultures with resistant organisms, febrile, white count goes up, they got pus in the chest. So it's not just a couple of fevers. This patient's persistently septic. So at some point, at three weeks, basically, you know, we made the decision, well, this patient's just not getting uh, an IM rod. So we uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, adjust the X-fix at that point and um, uh, try to line it up at least so it looks reasonable. And, uh, you know, that's what he gets. He lives with the X-Fix for five months uh, because we didn't want this to refracture. But, you know, he's got reasonable alignment, reasonable callus. Uh, you can even see uh, after uh, we take the X-Fix off, he's still got this, like, uh, knee mobilizer on him. I'm not sure it's really doing anything. But um, this is a, so this is a case where um, you planned on staging and it just never happened, right? Maybe if we rotted that patient and he made it through, he would have been a little bit better off. Maybe, but radiographically, it's you know it's healed, not infected. Another case: multiple gunshot injuries, massive hemorrhage, scrotal injury, and I think that's important because actually, you know, there's a bullet that came through the scrotum, through the femur, and then presumably that's the bullet right there, uh, and a femur fracture to the other side as well. Here, shown on the left. Okay. So it gets damage control approach because it's bilateral femur fractures. The left one gets uh, nailed. The right femur gets um, uh, treated with external fixation. Um, gets converted to an IM nail uh, at about 10 days, which we felt was appropriate. Unfortunately, patient gets an infection. Um, rod has to come out. 
reamed out, cleaned out the biofilm, put an antibiotic spacer rod in there. It's not healed. It's not stable. The patient has to be in this long um, uh, brace um, to try and stabilize things a little bit. Eventually, after a few weeks, uh, it gets revision nailed. The patient's been on antibiotics. The fracture goes on the heel. Uh, and then that implant uh, eventually came out down the road, but maybe he would have been better off without the X-Fix, right? So what are the problems with staged management with an X-Fix? Well, it's, again, it's two surgeries, got the cost, uh, the morbidity also. Uh, there are potentially uh, going to be pin-tract infections, as I mentioned earlier, and like that uh, case I showed, sometimes the patient never gets the rod. Now, this doesn't happen often, but it can happen. And then again, you can potentially get complacent. You're just X-fixing patients maybe that uh, are not best treated with an X-fix. So in conclusion, there's no free lunch with X-fixing femurs. Okay? Early appropriate care is usually an IM nail, but occasionally it could be an external fixator. And at this point, we simply don't have enough good data to fully understand who benefits from damage control orthopedics and to what extent. Okay, thank you very much.